Well, Srini, I know you have a new book coming out and I'm super excited. I've read it. I love it. And the concept I think is so practical. I'm going to try to keep this to seven minutes or less, but I was hoping you could share with us why tinkering is a good solution for stress. So tinkering is a great solution for a couple of different reasons. Um, I, I think that the main reason is that, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a chill network in the brain called the default mode network. If you can't remember it, the DMN called, think of it as the do mostly nothing network. <laughs> and so this network is a network that gets activated when you're unfocused. Mm. And so putting yourself into an unfocused mode actually gets rid of stress because you, you actually, paradoxically, stress is not just about being busy. It's about not being engaged. Mm. So if your self is not present, you can't do something. Sometimes you have a lot of work to do, but you're fully present. That's not stressful. Yeah. So... Here's one cool idea about it. When you tinker and you activate this default mode network, in, a, in your baseline state, your brain's focused attention is like a fork. It picks up just solid pieces of your identity. That's what goes to work. It's like, I'm Heidi, I'm a woman, I do stress stuff. That's all solid, obvious. Yeah. But when you start tinkering, it turns on your default mode network, your do mostly nothing network, and it invites other silverware to the table. Mm. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, here's a spoon for the delicious melange of flavors of your identity. You know, the person who likes a particular kind of beer, the person who remembers a nice, you know, the smell of apple pie that her grandmother used to make. All of these pieces of your identity now are come to the fore, they're online again. Yeah. Then you get the chopsticks, which are really amazing. They sort of associate ideas across your brain. So all of a sudden, your brain is starting to associate things and make new impressions of you. And then you get, depending on what you eat, a marrow spoon or a melon spoon that goes into all the nooks and crannies of your memory centers in the brain and picks up all the stuff about you that focus could never get to. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, who you are is not just Heidi according to the fork. You're Heidi with the fork, the spoon, the chopsticks, and the marrow spoon. And so we've got a lot of Heidi. Heidi that was hiding and Heidi that was like right out in the open. And the awesome part about that is that Heidi has more of herself online so she can be more engaged. And when she's more engaged, she's less stressed. So that's, that's the bottom line about that. I love it. Now, what would be considered tinkering? So a couple of different things you can do if you want to put yourself into that kind of mindset. Firstly, easiest thing, nap. 10 minutes nap gets you to clarity. 90 minutes of a nap gets you to creativity. So if you just need, if you're wiped out and you just need to finish something, just sleep for 10 minutes. If you're wiped out, but you've got to do something really creative, give yourself the full 90 minutes. So that's number one. I would say the number two thing is doodle. You know, a lot of US presidents doodled. So what we know from doodling is that doodling actually improves memory. So if you want to create what we call this attention cycling, meaning re-energizing the brain, so you give your focus, your focus circuits a rest, doodle, so you can start activating this default mode network. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is what we call positive constructive daydream. And it's different from slipping into a daydream. Slipping into a daydream is like falling off a cliff. You don't really want that. <laughs> you, you know, if you're going to go off a cliff, you need to be, get good gear, go on a skydive, or have a parachute. So right. plan your daydream, number one. Set aside like 15 minutes of your day, and then just... Close your eyes to take your attention inward. And it's more like mindlessness than mindfulness. So mm -hmm. you're going into your brain and you're just sort of wandering around. Don't worry about it because in reality, we've shown that the brain circuits for focused attention under the radar are directing your mind wandering circuits. That's why people who suddenly have Eureka experiences have them. Their minds are wandering, but there's something directing the mind according to a particular path. So build mind wandering time into your day, napping, doodling, and then one of my favorites, which is psychological Halloweenism, which is a term I use for a study that showed that to be more creative and to activate these circuits, people who, who behave like eccentric poets were actually much more creative than people who took on the identity of a rigid librarian. So find your favorite character to imitate and just be in character. And the whole day, just be in character. And even if you're by yourself, do it by yourself. You know, like there are days where I'm like, I'm just going to embody Mick Jagger. And just like feel what he feels about whatever he's feeling. And it's scary at first because you know, it's not like part of your original character. 
But I tried this in a corporate workshop recently, and it worked fantastically. People were really shocked at how, by getting out of their own heads, yeah. they were able to think like someone else and find solutions because, you know, it wasn't the same old path. So I think positive constructive daydreaming, napping, doodling, and psychological Halloweenism, those are the four ways in which you can get started, but there are a lot more. Great, which is why everyone has to read the book. So if you don't mind, I'm going to dress up as you for the rest That's of the day. That would be awesome. I'll do, I'll do the same with you. <laughs> you don't want to, trust me. 